Welcome to Mix Understood, where we explore identity, the meaning of the word race, and talk about the multicultural and multiracial experience with stories from our own lives and today with stories from our listeners. I'm Hannah Lee and I'm Amy and today's episode is our holiday season finale. Last week, we started by talking about our own stories to do with being mixed and celebrating the holidays. So we thought, what better way to reach the finish line of this season than by collecting stories from you, our listeners? Yes, we are so excited. One of our goals when we started this podcast was to create a community that is a space for mixed people to feel seen, heard and understood, as well as a place for people who want to learn about the mixed experience. That's why your voice is so important and essential to this journey and it's all about you today. We have a collection of multicultural, multiracial and interfaith stories that will hopefully weave together a bigger picture of what it's like to be mixed or to be part of a mixed relationship or a mixed family when it comes to navigating the holidays. Please bear in mind that we did have an open invitation across all holidays and religions, but we did get a majority of Christmas-related stories today. We really do hope to hear more stories down the road from anyone who celebrates other holidays, so please know that that door is wide open. just before we start we have a new patron program that we've put together if you would like to consider supporting our podcast as we go into season two we love we cannot even describe how much we love doing this but any help with the production costs and what it takes to keep this ship sailing would be so incredibly helpful you can find the link on our website our show notes or on our social media so without further ado let's do this all right Let's start with our lovely listener, Blake Perlman. Her mother is from Jamaica and her father is an Ashkenazi Jew, Polish and Hungarian. And here's a little snippet of what the holiday is like in her home. What up, Mix Understood podcast? Appreciate the forum uh, to make space for people like me to raise our voices. My name is Blake Perlman and I am from New York City and also Los Angeles, California. I just wanted to share, growing up, both Christian and Jewish, when it came to the holiday season, it was always very uh, interesting. But in our household, the beautiful thing was that my parents both really respected each other's faiths and really wanted our home to be inclusionary of both. So. Both of my parents were very committed to celebrating both, and both of them took on all of the responsibilities. For example, there was uh, the Christmas uh, or the holiday season where my father wasn't around and my mother, who is from Jamaica and Catholic, had to try to help us celebrate Hanukkah, and she brought us the guilt and she helped us light the candles. She had no idea what she was doing, but she wanted us to have the experience. And it was the same thing when my father would, every Christmas, take us down, and we would usually be in New York City, take us down to one of those lots and pick out his favorite tree. And he was just as excited as me and my brother to take it home and uh, decorate it. And uh, as much as things could be very confusing, being multi-ethnic, bi-ethnic, the holidays were always filled with uh, so much warmth and joy and I kind of felt like I was winning to have not one, but two cultures that I got to celebrate every year. So that's a good part. Wow. Thank you so much, Blake, for that message. Um, I love the way that your parents respect each other's cultures, even when one of them isn't around to keep that going, uh, despite not maybe not knowing what they're doing um, or, or that not being of, of their faith. I, I just have this vision of your dad going in to look for the Christmas tree and, you know, getting as excited as you and your brother. That's just such a sweet moment. I know that is, it is so precious. It made me think of you, Amy, how you know, you're trying to learn the prayer for Hanukkah. <laughs> we mentioned this last episode. And 
I'm not doing very well though, am I? (laughs) (laughs) The only word you know is Adonai. (laughs) And I'm curious what your, what Blake's mother's um, Hanukkah song and prayer version was. (laughs) Yeah, I'd love to know. Um, But yeah, that's just so, so lovely. And thank you for the shout out as well. Oh man, New York City, when I lived there, I love seeing all of the the Christmas tree sales on the street corners and everything. Mm. It's so magical. It's it's a thing there. You know, that reminds me of, um, this is not real life, but it reminds me of Home Alone. Yeah. Because it's set there, isn't it? And, oh, that would just, that's like the epitome of Christmas. I, lo- I haven't seen Home Alone in a while. Oh my God, I thought you were going to say you've never seen it. I was like, what? <laughs> Let's stop recording and go watch it right What's now. What's your favorite part of the film? Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, I really embarrassed myself. Oh, no, um, no, I, I don't know why, but right now, I mean, I, th- I don't think this is my favorite moment from the film, but the first image that, that's coming to my mind is when he lays out the Christmas ornaments for the thieves, and they open the window from the outside, and then they come in and they step on all the sharp Christmas ornaments. That is brilliant, isn't it? I know. I thought, good on you, kid. Genius little boy. Kevin. I know. I think I maybe even laughed. Oh, oh! I rem- I just remembered my favorite part. Come on, <laughs> Harry! You look like a chicken. <laughs> I think that's his name. It is. Do it's you know? Harry. Yeah, the one yeah. with the curly hair. Harry! You look like a chicken. <laughs> Do you know? You remember that part? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from Home Alone and New York City to another wonderful listener, Michelle Boucher. First and foremost, I wanted to thank you guys for doing what you're doing um, and continuing this conversation. I feel like it's something that has needed to have happened for a really long time and it's something that I wish I would have had growing up. So thank you ladies very, very much. Um, As far as holiday traditions, (laughs) Well, my mom is from rural Thailand, and my dad is French-Canadian, and being that my mom is Buddhist and being growing up in rural Thailand doesn't really follow the uh, traditions of Christmas. And so the only thing that we would do that was somewhat different is that we always had rice. There was always rice at Thanksgiving. There was always rice at Christmas. Um, It was either rice or fried rice. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Wow, we got rural Thailand and then French Canadian. Mm -hmm. And we've got rice in the middle. (laughs) Bring on the rice. I can't get enough rice. But Michelle, thank you so much. That honestly means so much to to us. The fact that you said that you wish you had something like our podcast growing up. That is just so meaningful. Sometimes when we're recording these episodes, we're like, is this working? Is this... Oh, <laughs> yeah, know, we're like, does you... anyone resonate? Oh my God, maybe I shouldn't share that. It's really embarrassing and silly and I don't know, maybe too sad of a memory or... Yeah, it's been it's been scary to put ourselves out there and... It, it does. It means so much to know that it is impacting you and that you're enjoying listening to this. And it's so special that we could have you on here as well. Yeah. And we'd love to, to learn more about you. You know, speaking of rice, we've been having, a, if, I don't know if you've heard the episode of our mixed stories in the industry. Rice was quite a theme in that episode. And you know what? Just kind of giving you a heads up. Rice might be a theme in this episode, too. Oh. oh. On that I- note. Maybe we'll move on to another voice memo. You know what? I've never had rice as part of my Christmas meal on on the actual Christmas lunch. But if it was there, I would gladly have some fried rice with my with my meal. I really would. Maybe in a separate bowl. In a separate bowl, Amy? What do you mean by that? (laughs) Maybe as a starter. (laughs) You know, I can't get enough rice. I love it. All day long, I'll eat rice. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what do you mean as a starter i feel like you're you're saying i'll eat it but i don't want to eat it with my turkey and gravy necessarily <laughs> i don't know do you know what though i'd give it a whirl i really would 
I have mixed feelings about rice. I don't want to say any much more. I want to, my sister also left us a voicemail, actually, my younger sister, Mari. So some memories from Christmas. One of them was around our Christmas tree. It was probably the most pitiful Christmas tree. I live now in the UK and I see the beautiful Christmas trees that you can pick up and buy and take to your house and they smell amazing and they look beautiful and the leaves are soft. Um, and the Christmas trees we would get, because there aren't many Christians in uh, Israel, would always kind of be these pine pine trees that were very scruffy and painful to pick up. Uh, they would always have sap all over them and they'd be quite sad and dry. Um, and some years we would have to even like bind two trees together uh, just to make it look fuller. But it didn't matter to a lot of our friends because they've never experienced Christmas and a lot of their introduction to Christmas was through our kind of traditions that we just built from scratch. Um, and it was really special for them to be able to come to our house and see the Christmas tree um, all up and bright and very um, colorful. And every year that's that's basically the the main attraction for a lot of our neighbors and friends. And they'll come, you know, from all the corners of, of the country just to come and see us during Christmas time and see the tree and take a picture next to it. So kind of something that cannot be compared to maybe some of the Christmas trees you'll find overseas um, was still really special for people here. I think another one is um, the fact that if you ask any of the people who have ever been over for Christmas, they'll believe that our Christmas is the exact Christmas tradition that's carried out in millions of homes around the world. Um, but in reality, we just uh, decided to adopt anything that we found worthy to be fun, you know, that lifted the spirits, that made our guests happy. and mainly because we just didn't come with a template for what Christmas needs to be. Our Japanese family probably don't really celebrate Christmas. They celebrate New Year's a lot more. Australian family, well, Christmas is in the summer there. Um, so we, we took things both from a lot of kind of international inspiration, but also Jewish holidays uh, like Passover or the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, um, and, and of course, Hanukkah, that always tended to overlap with Christmas. So I think that when I asked my friends, one of them is called Yulia and one of them is called Anim, they said that we always loved, you know, the, the tradition and the fact that every year that we came, you know, it just got better and better. And the fact that you used to sing the 12 days of Christmas and put on a show and your sister used to always like make everyone get up and do a little dance, depending on which day of Christmas they were. And then one year you decided to add a song that you sang to everyone that, that walked out of the door. And of course, all of the traditional food. And I asked my friend, Lenin, do you mean our rice with gravy and soy sauce? And she's like, oh, I thought that was traditional. And, you know, uh, a lovely thing that they said that it was, it was always so nice to be able to speak to people from so many different cultures and backgrounds and, you know, practice their English a lot more than they used to. Um, but the thing that they noticed most is when people made toast, which again is probably a New Year's thing, um, but we decided to make everyone who came over do a toast um, around the table. Um, they said that it was beautiful to see how, even though we might be coming from different places, our desires and our wishes for the new year always seem to to be very similar. So yeah, I think I think that's it. That those are my anecdotes and impression from the holiday. Oh my gosh, thank you, Mari. Man, we sound alike. You sound alike and um I love the way that she just described all of that. And I was laughing about the double tree thing. I oh my gosh, I forgot about that. I can imagine you going, This is how they do it around the world. <laughs> <laughs> this is normal. I know some some years Mari reminded me that we would also have to like hide the really weird branches. We would kind of have to turn the tree around and so that the weird parts were facing away from <laughs> from the room. Yeah, and they really if you hold if you if we picked up the tree with our hands, man, you'd have cuts and and burns for days because they were so do? dry. How did you get it to your house? Well, you had to, you know, wear thick gloves and mm. I'm happy to say that I've never had to 
Oh, somehow did you manage to avoid that? Somehow the tree always was like in a bucket <laughs> with rocks waiting for me to decorate it. <laughs> Someone's done all the hard work. Santa and his elves. <laughs> There's magical people. Um, I know. My brother is like probably rolling his eyes in, in Perth <laughs> where he is right now. Yeah. Oh. He's like, yeah, magically appears in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, yeah, him, my older brother and my younger brother, Mikey. They get the tree. My older sister has to do the lights. She hates that job. That is a bit of an annoying job. And then somehow I've always been part of the decorating crew. <laughs> Just la la la. I put like one ornament I make, on. I make drinks for everyone and I sing and I and I dance. And you make everybody dance. That's what you're saying. I love said. that she brought that up. Because remember we were saying in the previous episode how we have the dance for the twelve days of Christmas? Yes. I guess that's something I initiated too. We also we have a thing where anyone who comes in to our house or leaves our house, we sing them, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And then does someone carry it on? We no, all went for you. No, no. No, that's it. <laughs> but everyone joins in and everyone starts to do it as the day goes on when someone <laughs> leaves or arrives. And then so you're you doing it singing constantly. That. Yeah, you sing it about, I don't know, 60 times on Christmas Day. <laughs> it starts to get a little bit redundant. But the but our visitors love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I also got, I guess, my impression of what goes on. The fact that she said that everyone comes from the four corners of Israel to come to your house. I'm like, wow. Yeah, we do. We have people come all the... I mean, Israel's tiny, okay? It's like an eight hour drive from south to north, but people come all the way from the, yeah, from all corners of Israel. Well, they travel like four hours to come see yeah. you. Yes, 100%. Really? Yeah. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is mind blowing for me. They'll come to see what Christmas is, what it, what it's about. Well, they, they we have regulars. We have regulars at this point that they come. They already know, they know the drill. They know the 12 days, they know we the song. We wish you, yeah, yeah they walk they, in the door. They have a toast ready. They, you know, they're, they're, they're on. They're ready to do the our version of Christmas. I love that she said that one of her friends thought that rice with gravy and soy sauce was part of a Christmas, Christmas tradition. So my dad being Japanese, you know, He's got to have his rice with every meal. Yeah. So you guys also have. Do so it. we also, yeah. Speaking of um, Michelle Boucher, we also had rice on the table, and I always had mixed feelings about it because, you know, after my parents were not doing Christmas anymore together, and my mom would still make the the steamed rice and put it on the table, and to me, I was like, do we need it? Do we? The, we have so much food. Mm. Like we have mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes and cornbread and like do we really need the is anyone gonna eat the steamed rice and my mom was like yes we have to have it yeah and I was like okay but I, do people I eat love it? it do you eat it I I don't but I think my sip I think Mari does and my other siblings do and the guests do so yeah yeah exactly <laughs> see I totally would Okay, that reminds me of something that happens in our family. This is a little different to rice. This is potatoes. We're moving on. My <laughs> my stepdad, Dave, he has to have roast potatoes and mashed potatoes as well okay. as part of every roast dinner, not just Christmas Day. But this is an ongoing joke, battle. argument, battle, mm -hmm. yeah, that my mum has with him. She's just like... Oh, do we need it? You do know, we we've need got... two potato, two yeah. versions of potatoes? Dave, Dave, we've already got one kind of potato. I know. Okay, so on on the same line, it's like, well, we have stuffing, right? And the stuffing has rice. So I was like, do we need? Sorry, this... stuffing Wait. has rice. Does your okay. stuffing have rice? <laughs> on your face just froze like did you say <laughs> stuffing with rice yeah so um i guess that's another place we shoved rice into <laughs> we <laughs> we would have two well actually one of our pammy who's like our our auntie she does like a traditional american stuffing but then 
we would also have a rice stuffing. So we would have two types of stuffings some years. Ooh. And then in addition to that, also the steamed rice. We would have roast potatoes and mashed potatoes, Amy, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm giving it to Dave. I'm really sorry, Bevy. <laughs> Amy's mom. <laughs> She's going to be like, Hanalei, you let me down. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how my mom speaks. I do an extra posh accent when I do my mom's voice. She's very posh, your mom. She is. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of food and family, we're going to move on to my brother. This is Aaron. He's obviously the same mix as me. Our mum is Indian Punjabi and our dad is white British. Here we go. The great thing about being an MLT cultural family around Christmas is the fact that you have about 10 Christmases because you have so much family. You have about 10 places to go, 10 days in a row. You have all sorts of food, samosa, curry, turkey, turkey curry, turkey samosa, turkey sandwiches. It's great. That is... <laughs> That's my Christmas in a little food nutshell. Yeah, that's what happens. Samosas, uh, all, all the things that my brother just said. Yeah. I love that. I feel like he should open a deli and, you know, anytime a customer walks in, they're like, what's on the menu? Turkey, turkey samosa, samosa turkey, turkey sandwich sandwiches. with turkey. <laughs> Just in that exact tone as well. <laughs> and then ending on, it's great. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, you guys do have, you have a massive family and it sounds like a lot to go from house to house and make sure you see everyone and, and yeah. eat all the, all the combinations of, of British <laughs> Indian food leftovers possible. <laughs> Yeah. Like grilled turkey sandwiches <laughs> with samosa sauce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever you want, it goes. But yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way, though. It is so fun to see everybody. And yeah, it just makes it extra special. Well, let's keep the Indian theme going. We have Gabriella and Rakesh, and here is their story about how they celebrate the holidays. Hello, everyone. I'm Rakesh, and I'm from India. Hi, I'm Gabriella, and I am from Hungary, and we are an, an intercultural couple. And today we are going to share with all of you how we celebrate our Christmas and other holidays together. So Christmas is coming, so we are excited to celebrate it together again. Usually what we do is we prepare special food together and we, we join my family. Of course, it's a, a Christian holiday, but even though Rakesh is from Hindu religion, we always, not just about Christmas, but about all holidays, we explain the symbolic meaning behind the holiday and then we include each other and celebrate with the family together. So Christmas to me is uh, something like Diwali because there are so many lights, there is a lot of food and gifts. So perfect definition of Diwali for us. So I participate in Christmas the way I participate in Diwali. So we clean the house, we decorate the Christmas tree, we put the lightings and make lot many, lot many food. Yeah, so we are going to make some Hungarian sweets as well, called as Salon Cukor, which we make some uh, chocolate-coated sweets and then we put it on the Christmas tree and that also becomes a decoration. And we make sure that uh, the food which we make and eat is also on a healthier side, which is suitable for both of us. Yes, yeah, so even though in Hungary... Eating meat is a, a very like traditional thing. Um, we still make uh, vegetarian food as well and then my family also tries it. So let us know how do you celebrate and uh, it was a joy sharing our celebrations with all of you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How sweet are they? I know. Rakesh and Gabriella, you are so, I just want to hug you both. Right? Squeeze them. I know. And eat one they of those. They should have a channel. They should. They do, actually. 
they've got an Instagram page that's devoted to sharing about their intercultural relationship. We'll put it in our show notes of this episode. Yeah, definitely. I love the chocolates on the tree. That is so cool. And that you freaking make them. What? I know. That is some... That is some high level commitment right there yeah. it sounds like they go all out all out and they're concerned about the health of the food as well well that's to have vegetarian options as well i think that's what he meant that's very nice that they do that and not just like meat with meat and meat and potatoes yeah <laughs> which is basically what happens in my family i need some fiber on this table <laughs> i need some greens um we put candy canes on the tree do you guys do that no, we don't really like candy canes. <laughs> <laughs> I Okay, this is a terrible confession I'm about to make. I'm not a fan of candy canes either, but it's Honestly, one of like... You went on yeah. about them in the last episode. I know, because it's it's like our guests are all about it. So we always have, you know, a jar with candy canes on the table and then we put them on the tree as well. And then the kids that are visiting or the guests that are visiting, they can go to the tree and they can like pick a candy cane off the tree and take it home with them. And it's a special little thing. That's so sweet. Oh, yeah. The candy canes that you've that you've brought in your suitcase. Yeah. Over from America. No, do you know what? Yeah. If we put anything like food on our Christmas tree, it would get eaten. Well, yeah, that's the no, point. No, but it just wouldn't stay there. It wouldn't stay there until Christmas Day, though. I mean, it would just be gone. The Christmas mice. <laughs> They're called Dave and Aaron. Yeah, but chocolate on the tree. That is fancy. That's like a child's dream. That would be my husband's dream. I know. I, I, I wish I would do things like that. My mom is, and I'm sorry to give this away, mom, but my mom's a chocolaholic. Mm hmm. And I don't think the chocolate would last on our tree either, No, any. most definitely not. Wow, well, what, what a lovely Christmas they must have in their household. And you can hear, they sound so united. In, even in this short message, they sound like they really respect each other's mm -hmm. traditions and cultures. And it, it's beautiful. Yeah, so thoughtful. Oh, thank you so much. And I love hearing about other intercultural couples from different cultures, you know, Hungarian, Indian. So cool. I know. Actually, we're for season two, we're going to be doing an episode or two about intercultural dating and, and marriage and couples. Yeah, that's and right. uh, maybe we'll have them back again. Yeah, I think that would be a great idea. So moving on now to Sharice Marin, who has sent us a text message. She says, growing up in the USA, the child of an American father and Guatemalan mother, we began our family Christmas tradition celebrating mostly from traditional American customs because my mother didn't have other Spanish speaking people around to celebrate in her way. They divorced when we were still very young. And then my aunts and cousins joined us from Guatemala with my grandmother. And so we celebrated and still do Christmas as a blend of both traditions, which meant a big Christmas Eve gathering and Christmas morning gifts. All six to seven of us lived in a tiny house with one bathroom. So we had so much fun playing in the holidays. A couple of things that were significant that I noticed about us that were very different from everyone else around were, number one, Santa Claus wasn't a big thing. For my mum, the Christian religious aspects were much more significant and most activities focused on that. Santa was an American thing that we did enjoy, but much less important. So we never were raised to believe that he was real. My mum thought it was so strange to give a fictional character credit for her hard work to buy gifts. <laughs> That is brilliant. Just try and tell your schoolmates Santa isn't real, lol. You become the biggest party pooper for other kids, parents and teachers. Oh dear, Aww. sounds like she's had some experience of that, of what happened. <laughs> Number two, gift giving in general was also much less important than customary American gifting. As kids, we did get a handful of gifts we were so excited about, but so many fewer than other kids. I used to be shocked at how many gifts there were at other people's homes and that it was normal to gift everyone, not just close family. In my mum's culture, gifting was rare. Baby and wedding showers with gifts was not a thing. In fact, non-family bringing gifts to those occasions could be seen as insulting to the family as it implied that they weren't able to properly care for their family. 
Only when Christian missionaries began coming to my mum's town did they teach them about gifting other people. But it was only ever small, very cheap things. So that was hard growing up as a teen, especially seeing all your friends with tons of holiday gifts. But even now at 50, I've never gotten used to the whole gifting habit. I'd rather share time, food, support, help and practical things. I don't generally give or receive many gifts, but if you need an airport pickup or help cleaning, etc., I'm there. Wow, man, so much to unpack in here. Hello, where do we start? Well, first of all, we mentioned this in the previous episode. You mentioned, you know, one of the challenges that can happen when you're in a multicultural family is you find yourself in the holiday season and maybe you don't share a language with other relatives, which is kind of what happened to her mom. Mm. And also she was saying that her mother wasn't able to really bring her traditions into the picture. And it was only after her parents separated that they were able to bring that side in. And they kept the American customs, which was beautiful. That must have been interesting to kind of, at a young age, do Christmas one way and then see it completely shift into something else. And just that in itself is... Yeah, that's a big thing, isn't it? A big change. I really resonate with what she said about friends having so many more gifts than you. I don't really know how, how we were in our household compared to everybody else, but I remember having one friend that instead of an advent calendar, you know, when you open the little chocolates, she used mm-hmm. to get a present every day. Oh. I know. So all, all of the days leading up until Christmas from the 1st of December, she would get a, a big present every single day. And I remember thinking, what? oh my gosh. Yeah. And her stocking wasn't a, a stocking as such. It was a massive, huge sack. What? Yeah. And so it was just so different. Anyway, that just made me flash back to that. But I think that's the most extreme. <laughs> it's so extreme. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. Something was going on, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you were saying you weren't getting as many gifts compared to your friends. For me, interestingly enough, well, that was it was one the opposite. Friend. Yeah. Yeah, one friend. For me, it was the opposite because... My Jewish friends, yeah, they don't really get gifts in Hanukkah. I think it's a more of a new thing. I don't know. Compared to my friends, they would always be like, what did you get for Christmas? And I would be like, I got a backpack and yeah. new jeans and, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, it's hard when you feel, when you're comparing yourself to friends or if you feel deprived in any way. But I, I think it's really beautiful that her mom taught her that it, it really isn't about the gifts. Yes. And it's a, it's about finding meaning because that is what's so so much more important you know what I'd rather have someone's time just spent it being present with me than yes than a gift I couldn't care less about getting a gift in comparison time is the most valuable thing we have I once heard someone say like on your deathbed you're not going to be asking for more money or more gifts you're going to be asking for more time potentially mm-hmm. so true Charisse, you you mentioned airport pickups and cleaning oh my gosh what an angel i, I need more Charisse's in my life <laughs> actually i'm like how am i going to get to the airport going home this year because i got to go really early do you do early morning pickups too <laughs> Like middle of the night, red eye pickups. Do you do? (laughs) And I love the fact that she was like, "Uh, Santa's not going to take credit for my hard work. Thank you very much. Yeah, her mom. I know. The parents, they do so much during the holidays. Yeah. It's amazing. For years, you know, my mom would stay up until like two in the morning until we all fell asleep Mm. so that she could put the socks at the end of our bed. I bet she was just like, hurry up and go to bed. (laughs) I know. And I remember... When we were old, I mean, I think I was in my 20s when I finally I realized, like, man, my mom, <laughs> <laughs> what, twigged my mom needs to go to bed. And I think she, yeah, I think she, I think we started preparing the stockings at one point, huh. you know, but very late, very late in, in life. Also, baby showers, you know, she was talking about baby showers and, and gift giving yeah. in America. It is on a totally different level, I find. Yeah. Even just from coming from England, you know, you you don't... Okay, so so many people were asking me for a registry for the baby shower, which you organised, Hanali, which was lovely. But so many people <laughs> were asking me for a registry and I felt embarrassed to even create one to share with people because we don't really do that in the UK. You know? Yeah, registry 
make me feel extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, but it does my husband as well. So I don't know if it, I think it just depends on person to person, really. Let's listen to Petra Sprecher, who is also an immigrant, a Swiss immigrant here in the States. Okay. Hello, you lovely mixed human beings and everybody else who is listening. My name is Petra Sprecher. I grew up in Switzerland. I'm mixed. I am half Swiss and half Nigerian. And... Um, Never met my dad, though. I've never been to Nigeria. My parents split up before I was born even. And my mother is from the German part of Switzerland. So I'm Swiss-German-Nigerian without the Nigerian culture, even though obviously I feel it inside of me. (laughs) But I've never really fully lived it out. But um, this goes to say, so I grew up um, in Switzerland Catholic. We are Roman Catholic. My family is very Catholic. My mother's brother is even a a priest, a Roman Catholic priest. (laughs) He's the priest of the main church of that village, and he's done that forever. He's known that as a little boy. That's what he wanted to become, and uh, we love him. Yeah, it's a bit hard what's going on with the church because he obviously has nothing to do with it. But yeah, this was just a little bit of an intro. So usually I would fly home to Switzerland Um, about a week before the 24th, because for me, only the 24th is important. (laughs) Because as a kid, that's when we got all the kids and we lived in Santa Claus for a very long time. (laughs) So that was such a special day and even more, even better when we had snow on those days. That was amazing. And then the 25th has never really meant anything to me. You know, that's just a day where we keep on eating chocolate keep on eating good food and just look at our gifts and play with them. But yeah, since I'm no longer really living there and also I'm no longer really going home every Christmas, I'm probably going home every third Christmas, um, especially with the COVID and all that stuff and the strike. It's it's so expensive to go home and it's, it's also so cold <laughs> and the people eat so much over there. So sometimes when I stay in California, you know, after Christmas, I'm still healthy. <laughs> I've been eating my salmons and my salads here, you know, not that heavy Swiss food that we eat, those meats in the filet and teig and all that stuff. It's so amazing, but it's so heavy and so much champagne and Prosecco and all that stuff. And But yeah, this year I am spending Christmas with my Austrian friend. And last year I was spending it with my female German friends. So when I'm here in America, I'm mostly around Europeans. That's what it is. And I, I feel also that the Americans are not super welcoming in letting people in their homes. Um, so we are because I'm, I was a circus performer, so I'm mostly on Christmas. I'm actually traveling. I'm not even home in Switzerland with my family. I'm somewhere else where I don't know anybody, but where I'm performing. And, um, you know, those days when I was performing in Switzerland, my family invited all the other performers for Christmas. We invite everybody all the time. We don't, we want that. We love international, you know, we're we're not like, oh, it's just our little family. We're sticking together and nobody else can come. But yeah, whatever the reason is, I'm I'm just mostly with Europeans on on those kind of holidays. So thank you so much for asking me to do this. Have all an amazing holiday time. I guess that is politically correct. Okay, tschüss. Thank you, Petra. That's really fascinating. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad that you never got to meet your father, Petra, and that that's kind of a, a culture that you weren't around growing up. I'm curious to hear more about that. Um, but it sounds like you've you've had such a rich, full holiday experience with your family and that you keep creating it even here in the States, even though maybe people here aren't always opening their doors. I, I know that feeling when you tell someone like, yeah, I'm going to be here. I know it like with the Thanksgiving thing, like, yeah, we're going to be here. And then there's just like, silence Mm. (laughs) like they're not (laughs) planning on inviting you which you know it's I get it I mean some people that's their only chance to really be together 
because they don't have that time to be together as a family throughout the year. And so it's like yeah. the one time they, they have that quality time and they're protective of it. But I also get the flip side of it where it's like, come on, you know, there's all these people that are that might be celebrating alone. And, and can't yeah. we all? That's true. Yeah. And I, th- I think sometimes until you have experienced what it's like to live away from home and not have your family around, maybe mm. it, it wouldn't cross your mind as well. So, for, yeah. you know, all of those different reasons. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do understand wanting private time as well, of course. Yeah. That's so cool about the circus, like touring with the circus and then her mom taking in all of the circus crew. Like, I want to be at that Christmas table. It's, it's fascinating. What a job. A circus Christmas. You do the splits to reach the mashed potatoes. <laughs> And you swing across the the ceiling lamp to get to the stuffing. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. I also totally relate to the food situation because I think a lot of people have stress around like, oh my gosh, holiday season, we're going to be eating so much unhealthy food and sugar and fat and alcohol and, and, you know, I've been good all year and now everything's going to go out the window. And I definitely feel that because when I'm here in, in LA, I, you know, I've become totally LA, but I, I try to avoid or reduce, reduce dairy, reduce gluten, reduce sugar, <laughs> reduce alcohol. And then when I come home, you know, my mom is like, what do you mean you don't eat eggs and cheese and bread? <laughs> <laughs> she's like eat something you need to you need to eat something and yeah you know and then I you know I, I eat it all and and then the desserts like we have so many just desserts desserts everybody that walks through our door brings a cake and and I love it and I I go all out but it is it's definitely each time I'm like this year I'm gonna I'm gonna be healthier I'm gonna be really mm. strict and and I'm only you know only have one dessert or two desserts and then yeah <laughs> especially when you're a performer which she is and you mm-hmm. you really do need to um yeah your, your body is your commodity kind of thing yeah yeah for, for me this year I'm like I'm pregnant I'm just gonna not let myself go because obviously I still have to think <laughs> about myself being healthy but I generally am like, oh, I have a bit of a whatever kind of attitude when I go back because I know it's only for a couple of weeks and I don't know, I just really believe Christmas is about just enjoying those things and my mum makes freshly made scones and crumbles oh and yeah, I, I just I just get into it. I really do. Also, you know, you, you were saying that you every year you feel like you get more American, quote unquote. My cousins yeah. always laugh at me. They're like, do you have your matcha latte? Is it? <laughs> <Are you mean? laughs> I'm like, yeah, I do actually love matcha latte. I do. You go to the coffee shop in England and you're like, do you have a matcha latte? And they're like, no, honey, we've got black coffee. <laughs> no, we've got black tea. <laughs> We've got a good old cup of tea, nothing else. No, we do have matcha latte there. (laughs) So we're going to be hearing from some of our younger listeners now and we are going to start things off with... Ethan, that's my husband's niece, Ariel. She is a college student at Tulane University and she has this to say about her holidays. Coming from a Jewish American family, I'm lucky to celebrate the holidays in a unique way. One tradition my family has is coming together to sing Hanukkah songs and light the menorah and have family dinner as me and my siblings are so anxious to open up the little gifts we got for each other. Especially in a time like this, with so much conflict going on in the world, I am lucky to be able to spend Hanukkah with my family and keep Israel in our thoughts. Being able to celebrate Hanukkah in America with my family reminds me, not just me, but also my younger siblings, that our religion matters and we get to share the love with everyone who wants. One of my favorite things that we do is we invite our non-Jewish friends to celebrate Hanukkah or Shabbat with us, and they get to learn about my culture and be a part of that huge aspect of my life. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ariel. And I have been one of those people who has been invited to learn about the Jewish customs um, at their house. And it's been amazing to be a part of that and and eye-opening. And I love learning about different cultures. And I feel very lucky to be 
part of this family where they carry those traditions on. Yeah, I think as well that it's beautiful that in a time when there is such incredible anti-Semitism just flaring Mm -hmm. all over the world and a lot of Jewish people are afraid to even, you know, wear a Star of David or, you know, go to the synagogue that it is more than ever a uh, yeah a time to cherish your your ability to to celebrate your religion um here is a voice message from my friends who are like my family they're um omer was basically my my neighbor growing up in Jerusalem and Israel. His mother was an American that immigrated to Israel. And then Omer, in turn, moved back to the States and married a Filipino-American. And they had three kids. And so just like Ariel, yeah, they also celebrate Hanukkah and they invite people into their homes. And let's have a listen to these three Aww. cuties. Hello, my name is Noam. Hello, my name is Peja. So, today I celebrated Hanukkah. Before we get into that, let me explain my background. My mom is Filipino, Catholic American, and my father is Jewish, Israeli American. Bit of a tongue twister. Anyways, we celebrated Hanukkah. Hanukkah today, and we lit the um, Hanukkah, the menorah, said our prayers, sang songs. But as we did that, we like, you could always see like the Christmas tree like in the corner, and like my mom took a picture of my father, and he was wearing a ugly sweater, saying "This is how we do it." And, like in the background, you see a ch- Christmas tree just lighting up. <laughs> it's pretty funny, and like Jewish and Catholic traditions are also not really far apart like passover you have to find the matzah and easter you try and find eggs what's what's your favorite holiday Peja? my favorite holiday is hanukkah because of the suvganiya we get on the holiday a suvganiya is basically a donut with Jelly filling and powdered sugar on top is really nice. Another example of our cultures colliding is Thanksgiving and Rosh Hashanah. Even though like Rosh Hashanah is supposed to be New Year's, and like they still have something similar because we like your family and your friends all come together for like the feast and like celebrate like something big and like remember some remember like our year and also how to remember what we're thankful for. And, yeah, and we eat a lot of lumpia, like a Filipino, like spring rolls, and a bunch of lasagna, turkey, bunch of food that I love and I got stuffed with, almost puked, but it's (laughs) worth it. (laughs) You say your age. Uh, My age is 12. I am 12, I am 11 years old. (laughs) Can you say something in Filipino? Ba 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 ba. I'm not kidding. <laughs> What's ba 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 ba? Ba 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 is going down. Can you say something in Hebrew? Ata tapua kadama. That means you're a potato, but like for a boy. <laughs> Can you please do a subscription? Because I'm only five years old and I really want a um. <laughs> So you can become famous and get recognized by the Tony Stark actor and meet him. If you're hearing this, please, 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 please. Five? <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Mayumi and I'm seven. And my name means kindness and joy in Tagalog, which is the Filipino language. Do you know any other words in Filipino? Private part, bad word. <laughs> my favorite holiday is like Easter, um, Christmas, and Hanukkah. Cause in Hanukkah you get chocolate coins, uh, 
Easter, if you win the golden egg, you could get like money, and uh, in Christmas, you could you get like lots of presents. Do you feel lucky that you get to celebrate so many holidays? Yeah, because <laughs> I'm like the only one in my class that does this. And how does that? Are your friends jealous or? I try to be humble about it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> how cute are they? I love the way. He- they said I try to be humble about the fact that I get to celebrate all of these holidays. Aww. <laughs> They're so cute. It was interesting because I was at their house to celebrate Hanukkah this past Sunday. And it was a long table full of the mom, Janice's extended Filipino family. And I suddenly realized, like, oh, my gosh, my husband, Matias, and her husband, Omer, are the only two white people in the room and I was like this is so cool to be in like a flipped scenario yeah yeah I loved it and then when the kids lit the Hanukkah we the dad was like should we sing a Hanukkah song in Hebrew and then I busted out singing with the kids and the rest of the family was like oh she's the one that also knows the language (laughs) yeah she crosses boundaries (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's amazing. I love hearing from those three. And you know what also really hits home when they were saying about the similarities between some of the festivals? I love the fact that kids notice yeah. things like that, that, you know, sometimes I feel like as adults, we think that we're so separate and so divided in the things that we believe in yeah. and the things that we do. But actually, it's not true. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap. There's so much overlap. We're going to hear now from a woman called Wendy Cardona. She sent us a written message and I'm going to read it out. She says, Hi, in Colombia, we celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve. The tradition is that baby Jesus brings the presents at midnight when he is born. Everyone in their house has a nativity and the youngest places baby Jesus. Our Christmas dinner tends to be at night around 7pm or later. There's music, dancing, gift opening and at 12am the kids stay up until late and then it's party time. Generally the neighbours also all meet outside as our estates are gated and everyone celebrates together. Wendy was born in Colombia. Her husband is Caribbean British and she's been living in the UK since she was 12 years old. She continues to say, I haven't been back to Colombia for Christmas for eight years. My husband was born in the UK, but his parents are from the Caribbean, Jamaica and Antigua. Christmas with them involves great food from the Caribbean and music battles. Always great fun. I feel really lucky that I get to celebrate my traditional Christmas on the 24th and then celebrate again on the 25th. Oh my gosh, this is some major partying going on. Music battles, food, we're staying up until midnight. Yeah, and then the party only gets started. Everyone goes to the streets and wow, like how I suddenly feel like maybe we've been boring (laughs) this whole time. You've got to take these traditions to the family. Yeah, they've got some stamina. I love this music battles. I know. How fun is that? What it, What is music battles? Like karaoke battles, freestyle battles, Christmas carol battles? I don't know. What are we talking about? I, don't know. I need to know more. Yeah. And and how do you te- determine who wins? Usually it's the audience. We'll let you know. <laughs> Maybe they do it in front of the neighbors and the neighbors are the ones that decide. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Again, another multicultural couple and... You know, UK is far from Colombia. Mm-hmm. That's a long journey to make. Yeah, I can imagine it's not easy to get back there every year. And I love it that they're able... It worked out for them that their her big day is on mm-hmm. the 24th and his big day is the 25th. And so they get to yeah, do both. That's amazing. The fact that it continues, the party continues. I love it that the youngest places baby Jesus under the tree. Like there's this ceremony of... Everybody stands and then the smallest steps forward. In Passover, there is a song where the youngest one has to get up and sing it. So, yeah, just again, some similarities there. We're going to move on to Mike Cantrell, who actually I, I know as well, there was a time when his family 
lived in Israel, but he's lived all over the world, USA, Israel, South Africa, Cyprus, and now he's in Finland. So he has an American citizenship, and now he has Finnish citizenship as well. His mom is of Syrian descent, and when his grandmother's family immigrated to the USA, it was because they had to escape the hardships of Syria during that time. And uh, Mike ended up marrying a Finnish lady, and they have a little boy together, and this is what he writes. We celebrate the traditional Finnish Christmas to an extent here. It's celebrated on the 24th with a visit to Grandma's house to eat rice porridge and watch the snowman, then to the cemetery to include past loved ones by lighting a candle at their graves. Then we go to the sauna as a family. During sauna, and this is more of a family tradition, Santa Claus comes and drops off a sack of presents, which the youngest can hear from the sauna and always gets very excited. Then we have Christmas dinner, and finally, afterwards, we sit around the tree and open presents. Christmas Day is more for doing absolutely nothing other than eating leftovers and playing with all our new toys, gadgets we got from Santa. Usually here, the tradition is that the tree is brought in on the 24th as well, but we decorated the house already before Thanksgiving as we love to start earlier here. I asked him if they celebrate Thanksgiving as well. He said they don't celebrate Thanksgiving here, nor as a family, but he was just giving that as a timeline. Um, and I asked him, you know, how does it feel to celebrate this totally unique Finnish Christmas this way. And he said, as a foreigner in every country I have ever been, I'm used to new traditions. So it was fun and exciting for me to experience something new like this. Um, and then I asked him about, I was kind of blown away by the cemetery tradition. And he said that the cemetery visit is a Finnish tradition that is done on Christmas as well as Halloween. Everyone goes around the same time, just at dusk, to light candles for the deceased ones and give them some of the Christmas cheer. It's a beautiful sight as the sun sets and all the candles are lit at the cemetery. I love that. That's so, so lovely. Wow. I think I need to move to Finland. I know. I mean, just so many of the things that he mentioned, but that one in particular, just remembering the people who have passed, not only at Christmas, but also Halloween as well. And what a beautiful time of day. And uh, just just so beautiful reminds me it makes me think of um uh day of the dead in, in mexico yeah. that they they have that tradition as well la fiesta de los muertos isn't it that they do that yeah and then they go to the sauna no then they go and then they have yeah, and the then meal. they go to the grandma's house to watch the snowman or oh, they start with the grandma's house did you hear he said rice yeah. porridge we're having a rice a thon we really are <laughs> But the snowman, oh, that's so cute. I haven't seen that film. Have you? Yes, it's so sweet. They play it every single Christmas at like 6 a.m. in the morning in the UK. I'm sure I'll be Aww. up. <laughs> I will be. I know I will be. <laughs> Man, I honestly, I want to go and have a, a Christmas experience in Finland one year. So do I've, I. I've been there once before and I just love the sauna culture. Mm. Um, and I love it that they're in the sauna and then Santa arrives while they're all in the sauna. So, are I mean, is everybody naked? <laughs> Santa arrives, they're like, put your clothes on. Gifts, it's time for gifts. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> But I, I love the fact that they also wait until after the meal, until they're all sitting around the tree and then they open up their gifts. They don't just run down the stairs in, in the in the morning and tear open the gifts underneath the trees. I I feel like this is a very holistic Christmas yes. experience. They've cracked it. They they really have. <laughs> They've got it down. It's very balanced. Yes, just that philosophy around it that it's a day for doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. And he sounds so cool, Mike. The fact that he's lived in all these different places and he, he sounds really open, that he loves learning about new cultures and traditions. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you, Mike. Let's move on to more multicultural stories and food. Maybe rice will even be mentioned yet one more time. <laughs> 
We're going to hear from Chloe in New York. So in our multicultural, multiracial family, I'm half Jamaican, half white, British. My husband is Canadian, um, half Ecuadorian, half Guatemalan. So we have a lot of different cultural references that we pull from for Christmas time. And there's definitely always uh, compromises to be had, rows to be had about how to do Christmas, um, just because we come from such different backgrounds and we celebrate in very different ways. Um, the main sticking point is Kyle likes to celebrate on Christmas Eve. Um, that's how he's always done it with his family and like within that culture is they will like get together as a family and they like have a big party on Christmas Eve and when midnight, they all stay up till midnight and when midnight comes is when they open presents. So we haven't been doing it that way for a while, but this year we will be with his family. So we will definitely be doing that, which he's very excited about. And then for me back home is it was always... Um, well, with my mum, who's white, it would be we like wake up on Christmas Day and then we kind of open presents. But we'd go and stay with my nan, who's um, in Jamaican background, and we would go to church on Christmas Eve at like midnight. And they kind of did a similarish thing to my husband. So, yeah, so I kind of grew up mainly, you know, having Christmas on Christmas Day, whereas for my husband, it's definitely a Christmas Eve thing. And then um, also when it comes to food, there's definitely clashes of cultures and traditions, um, just because like, I love a mince pie and mulled wine from like, you know, the British culture. And we definitely normally have like a big roast dinner, whereas my husband's side of the family would do more like they have rice and things like that which is like so the opposite of what I would think of for Christmas dinner um so there's definitely things where you know it's like one big compromise and we're kind of feeling our way out and now we have a daughter we're trying to find our own traditions and what we'll take from each culture and each background so yeah <laughs> what a cool mishmash and now you know, pulling, like she said, pulling from these different Christmas ideas and going forward with their own family. And I, oh, Chloe, I'm right there with you. Mince pies and mulled wine. Bring it on as soon as I step off the plane. Wow, they're dealing with like UK, US, Canada and having to navigate travel to those places with a little girl and yeah, and we're we're back to the rice battle and we're back to the Christmas Eve versus Christmas Day battle. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys stay up until um, midnight on Christmas Eve? We usually, I mean, we're always up because we're still prepping for Christmas Day and we're like still wrapping gifts and, you know, boiling potatoes or whatever prep needs to happen and you know we're, we always say like we're gonna have a calm we're gonna have a calm christmas eve <laughs> and it's never it's never calm it's like i'm actually landing on christmas eve this year mm. hopefully and there won't be any yeah. delays so i'm gonna be totally drunk on oh jet and lag. yet again I'm honey, be like the christmas tree will be up <laughs> <laughs> Those little elves that would have already have come and done it. <laughs> oh, but I am staying longer this year, which means I might have to help take my it mom down. take the tree down. <laughs> Although we've we've transitioned to a fake Christmas tree a few years ago. So have we. we. We made a family decision, an executive decision. No more natural trees. No more. Too much. Yeah, too much. So we have now a perfect plastic tree and um, we get to fight over how to install it. There's always something to, to battle over. Um, There's always something to row over. Yes. Speaking of siblings, we're going to finish off this episode with one more message from my older sister, know me and um i haven't listened to this yet i don't know what we're about to listen to i'm wishing myself all the best <laughs> and i'm looking forward to it <laughs> so a core horrific memory that i have from the holidays 
is when uh, our family was selected to light the Advent candle in the lead up to Christmas at church. And it wasn't enough to light the candle. We also had to perform at some capacity. And uh, since we were neither musicians nor singers, my mom thought it would be an amazing idea to lip sync a song. So imagine uh, going to church one day and having a half Asian family lip sync Celine Dion's Feliz Navidad. Yes, so you have a half Asian family lip syncing to a French Canadian singer in Spanish. To top it all off, I was probably 16 or 17. Um, my siblings were much, much younger. And because I technically knew all the words of Feliz Navidad, despite not being the performer in the family, that's always been Hannah's domain, uh, I was forced to be front and center and go along with this entire humiliating charade. So yeah, uh, I don't know what it looked like from the other end, but I knew that in my core it felt definitely wrong, and I will never forget that to today. <laughs> she sounds like <laughs> she's scarred from that. <laughs> Is this on video um, anywhere? Uh-oh. Maybe, I don't know. Get it I, and show it yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah that video. <laughs> Do you remember doing this? I do. I'm embarrassed just hearing all of I'm cringing just hearing her tell this story. <laughs> There's some things that are just better left in the past. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> How did it go down? What was the response? I can't remember. Um, but I, I mean, I remember that I, you know, I used to dance jazz back then and I choreographed the whole thing. And there was definitely a lot of shaking and and wiggling in this dance that maybe wasn't so appropriate for a church service. <laughs> it wasn't the most conservative choreography. Um, <laughs> I just can't believe you made your family do choreography. <laughs> oh, I mean, every day since I was little, yeah. I'm, like trying to force them and everyone around me to dance. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Did you all like, did you all really take it seriously? I think, you know, I was younger and my other siblings, you know, we were kind of cute and younger. And my si Nomi, she's the eldest. So for her, it was like she was an, a teenager, you know, it was utterly embarrassing. Yeah. But we were little. We were so cute, you know. <laughs> so we kind of got away with it. But she had to suffer the consequences, I think, on a higher level. <laughs> <laughs> was your mom doing it as well? I think so. Yeah. I think we all did it. The whole family. I think even my dad. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> I'm glad we're ending the episode on a really embarrassing story of mine. <laughs> you know, it feels like we just had kind of a, a holiday celebration with everyone. I feel I like know. everything was so vivid. The smells of the food and the decorations mm -hmm. and the traditions. It's like we all came together and we had one big party. Yes, it really feels like that. Thank you so much to everybody. I know. It was really special. I feel like you're about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a really good time this last hour. Me too. I feel I feel good. Like I'm I'm fine to move on to New Year's now. So am I. And you know what? I feel like I can't wait to try and force my family to do some of these things that I've been hearing about. <laughs> And bring a bowl of rice to the table on Christmas like Day. We could we could start a new podcast that's just all about holidays and traditions from around the world, and then we just tour with the podcast, and we experience those things. Yeah, yeah maybe for another lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> park it. Um, so we are just wanted to give you guys a heads up, but we this is as we've said a few times, this is our season finale. So. We are going to be both going home to our families for a well-earned break. Yeah. Um, we're going to be taking a six-week break from this podcast. Um, we will still be present on social media, though. And um, so if you want to write to us, uh, if you have any feedback, we're, we're still here. And then when we get back to the States, we're going to 
dive right back in to preparing season two for you. Yes, which we have actually already made a start on and we're very excited about the things that we've already been doing. As we mentioned at the beginning of this episode, we have started a new patron program. Um, So please consider supporting our podcast. If you enjoy the content that we're bringing to you, it would help us in such a huge way to just continue with what we started um, and to be able to delegate and to maybe have a bit of a team. So it's not just Hannah Lee and I, because it does take so many hours to you know to produce this and we, we want to do it in the most quality way and we want to bring those expert insights and get the best guests we possibly can get yes exactly and um so we thank you in advance please consider supporting us during this holiday season it would make our day our year um also if you enjoyed this episode if you enjoyed this season please rate please leave us a review thank you to those who have rated and reviewed and if you haven't yet we're asking you to please leave us a review it really really helps and it'll help us also build momentum for season two and help us to grow as well and reach new listeners to raise our voices yes so please consider sharing this episode with your friends and family that might benefit from listening to all these collections of stories today i know i did i feel like It's just kind of broadened my horizons. Me too. I feel refreshed listening to what Christmas is like or what the holidays are like in other people's houses. Yes. All right. Well, on that note, if you haven't had rice on your table this holiday season, we urge you to do it. We urge you to (laughs) to incorporate rice into your holiday traditions. Um, You can put it in the stuffing as we discussed. (laughs) You can put it in the stuffing. Hidden. You can make it fried rice. You can make a rice pudding. You can make a rice porridge. You could have it with gravy. You could have it with soy sauce. There's many so options. So many options, yeah. yeah. If you're worried about whether, you know, you're going to have one or two or three potato variations on the table, you know, why don't you just go for it and have them all this year? Yeah, the more the merrier with everything. Yeah. Thank you so much again to every person who took the time to write in and leave us a voice memo. We truly appreciate it. And we are wishing you the best holiday season ever. And we can't wait to see you in the new year. All right. Bye. Bye. This episode was produced by us. Music by Matthias Kunzli.